Hello, my name is Keiko Hirema. I'm a Wolfram Alpha developer in Scientific Content Group. I'm introducing new biology content accessible in the Wolfram language. Uh, hi, hello. Uh, so we are introducing new biology content accessible in the Wolfram language. Uh, so in this session, we like to highlight three new features uh, in biology area. Uh, I would like to introduce new species data, including updated taxonomy information, as well as support to uh, query um, uh, and explore uh, various characteristics of uh, various organisms. And we are lucky to have two biology experts in our team. Uh, Lena will be introducing dinosaur and prehistoric animal data sets, and Carlos uh, will be introducing updated genomics data. And for species data, we made update recently to include um, updated information. So new species data is going to be available very, very soon, uh, which is based on NCBI taxonomy database and providing uh, hierarchical relational information for uh, close to 2 million taxa, so including almost 1 million animals. And great things about this new data set is that you can get more detailed uh, taxonomic rank information. So in addition to traditional uh, primary taxonomic sequence information for individual species, uh, you can also get uh, secondary uh, rank level information. So you can get more detailed like subphylums, superorder, uh, those kind of information is available. So that allows us to get a better picture of a tree of life. So, and also you can get a list of species uh, belong to a uh, given taxonomic branch in a tree very easily. So for instance, you can get the list of all species uh, belong to this elephant family in taxonomic tree. And we also added support to query or group of uh, group organisms by their specific properties like ecological, geological, or other biological characteristics. So for instance, you can get a group of species uh, that is considered as fish, and also that can perceive magnetic signal, and you get a nice list of species with uh, images. And we also added support to query uh, various um, paraphyletic species group, so those are a group of organisms that uh, belong to multiple branches in taxonomic tree. So example is otters. There is no single taxon to describe otters in uh, current taxonomy database. So those are rather uh, defined in phyletic group. So you can actually query all uh, species that are considered as otter in this way and you can uh, query specific properties of author and uh, aggregate them. And this, so for instance, you can access taxonomy graph property to actually confirm that these author species uh, belong to different branches in taxonomic tree. So that's illustrating here. And there are various properties you can access to analyze species. So for example, conservation status information is available for over 70,000 species, uh, including the latest extinct endangered species information. Uh, so you can do some interesting thing, like for example, you can retrieve all terrestri uh, terrestrial mammals uh, and you can retrieve data set on conservation status and specific uh, habitat, terrestrial biome or habitat they belong and use classifier function to associate uh, biomes with the likelihood of species having threatened status. So I have to also mention that we have a nice polygon information for each uh, ecoregion or biome of species. So you can get an illustrated nice map uh, in the dark area, uh, I think representing uh, rainforest or forest biome, there are more species in threatening uh, conservation status. Uh, we also have like host and disease information of species. 
So for instance, uh, you can get all pathogens for uh, various um, uh, pathogens that can affect uh, various animals or even plants, or you can associate virus with common human diseases. And uh, 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 you can also illustrate like a network of host uh, pathogen illustration like this. So we have a really nice, interesting properties uh, that uh, you can explore uh, ecological characteristics of animals. And uh, there are also uh, biological properties that you can explore. Uh, you can access uh, nucleotide sequence length information or chromosome information from NCBI. Uh, for example, here, this is illustrating the species with the largest number of chromosomes. So surprisingly, you can see ferrons has the largest number of chromosomes. And if you are interested in uh, analyzing genome sequence, uh, you can actually retrieve a uh, reference sequence uh, genome accession number uh, from NCBI. So uh, for over a million of species, you can get this external object that actually links to uh, NCBI website and you can retrieve genome sequence in fast format so that you can do more uh, sequence analysis with this. And there are also, uh, you can explore geologic and geographic properties of species as well. Uh, you can look up animals by habitat, or I look up animals by uh, observation locations. Uh, we have over uh, 1.3 million data points that you can explore that are actually aligned to geo entities, uh, not only just countries, but ocean, uh, mountain, park, volcano, and so on. So for instance, you can find mammals, specifically you can find in Bali Sea, and you get the list, or reversely, you can find uh, the oceans, uh, where you can find dugons, for example, and you can uh, map it using a geographics function. For um, animals or that can migrate, uh, you can also analyze, um, observe the migratory patterns. For example, here we have a monarchy butterfly and you can retrieve the uh, geo points where you can find these butterflies uh, by date so that you can actually uh, analyze the migratory pattern of this, these butterflies. And lastly, uh, we also have properties to explore food habits of animals. So you can access predator information of animals found in Illinois, for example, here. And uh, you can get a list of animals that the Cooper's hawk prey on. And you get a nice list. Or using the same predator properties, you can uh, create the food network of animals uh, found in Grand Canyon National Park. So you can do really uh, cool things uh, with this new data set. So just a quick summary of the species data. We have a really nice uh, new data set that allows us to do more complex lookups and you can explore various characteristics. There are even more that I couldn't mention in this talk, but there's uh, really interesting things you can do with this uh, new data set. So that's all I have for species part. And now I'd like to hand this to Lina for the next part. Hi, I'm Lina, and I've been working on dinosaur and prehistoric animals data sets or databases. This is the outline of this short presentation. First, a short description of the database sources, then some important things about the new dinosaur and prehistoric animals databases, some graph analysis we can do with this new information, and I'll, uh, finally, a summary. So the first thing to say about the sources is that they are open source. We use the compact Tassilosaurus database for dinosaur taxa, we use the, also use the paleobiology database for both dinosaur and prehistoric animals databases or, or taxa. And we also got some information from Wikidata. Uh, okay, first for the dinosaur new databases, we have new taxa and new values for the uh, previous properties. So for example, in the already existing dinosaur database in Wolfram Alpha, there is around 
1,500 taxa. And we added with the new database around 1,700 new taxa. Also, uh, for the already existing properties for these dinosaur entities, uh, we have new values. For, so, for example, for the discovery country or the country for which the fossils are reported, and uh, we think with the already existing database, we covered these countries, but with the new database, we covered more pro countries uh, for both the already existing taxa and for the new taxa. Another example is that we, for geological period property, for example, we increase with the new database the number of taxa that is reported for each one of the these geological periods. So in orange is the tax, the number of taxa that is reported for each of the geological periods in the already existing data Wolfram Alpha database. And in purple is the new number of taxa reported for each one of these geological periods. Also for this new dinosaur database, we have new properties. And uh, with these new properties, uh, or these new properties give us a higher resolution of the location in which the fossils are found, such as coordinates, states, and city, as you can see in this plot. Also, we have more information of the geological time to which is, uh, the new taxa belongs, the new and the already existing taxa belongs to, for example, uh, geological formations. Uh, for example, here is the 10 most frequent of uh, the 10 most popular formation of the dinosaur database. And also uh, a new property that is the uh, a, a geological age to which the taxa belongs to that it was already processed at entities by Jeff. Um, you can find uh, their properties. Then uh, for prehistoric animals database, this is a completely new uh, um, database in Wolfram Alpha. We have around 34,000 taxa, including species, genus, and uh, so on. We have a uh, new properties additional to the already mentioned for dinosaur database, uh, properties such as reproduction, and this is uh, these values, uh, his values for reproduction property, also new property as avid um, behavior. So for the for each one of the uh, new tax and prehistoric animals. Mm. Um, finally, we can also make some graph analysis. We know this in for new information. For example, here I'm showing the a timeline plot of the geological periods of the 10 most popular dinosaurs. For example, for Stegosaurus, uh, uh, this new database is reported that they belong to a uh, middle and late Jurassic and also to the early and late Cretaceous, as you can see here in the timeline plot. Another interesting uh, graph analysis we can make is, for example, this. Um, here is this uh, clustering of the 10 most popular prehistoric animals. And here this dendrogram uh, cluster the taxa, which is a, a species level, according with their similarities in, for example, diet, um, environment, um, behavior, and reproduction. The black box represent the particular value uh, for each one of these properties in colors. Um, to which each one of these taxa belongs to. Uh, uh, we also can make some, we can uh, find some communities of a graph. Uh, for example, this graph, um, in this graph, the vertex are the families from dinosaur database in colors. Uh, each of the families are represented in colors. And the numbers is the geological period to which some of the taxa belongs to. For example, this family here in green have some taxa that belongs to the five geological period, which is late Triassic epoch. Also, some uh, of their taxa belongs to the seven period, which is also Triassic about the middle. Um, in this graph, for example, we can see that in this, this community show a, a variety of families, dinosaur families that belongs to that, uh, sorry, with families that uh, quit taxa that belongs to the 
uh, air liquid tassels, for example. Um, a similar graph, uh, for, this is a similar graph to the previous one, um, but here instead of geological period, I put a species behavior. So here we, we find a community in which all these families, um, dinosaur families have taxa that is, um, that have uh, two, uh, what, that their taxa are social, for example. This, with this kind of behavior. Also, for example, this family in green have taxa that is, for example, flight capable, or some of them are social, or some of them are solitary, for example. Mm. Um, finally, a summary of the presentation. Uh, we, uh, with this, we curated so the, the dinosaur and prehistoric animal databases that have new taxa, new properties, new values for the previous properties. Also, we curated, although I, dis, I, I didn't show so much about them, but also created some geological formation databases. Uh, with all this information, with all this new information, we can make a variety of uh, graph analysis or the analysis that you want to make. Um, thanks. So I'll talk to you about the uh, updates to genomics data. So in summary, updates to genomics data include access to gene cohomology information and associating human gene properties to specific assemblies, as well as providing genome assembly statistics. So first I'll talk to you about the updates to gene homology information. So homologs of a gene entity can be supplied as a list of as a list of gene entities. For example, if we want to see the genes homologous, the, hom the homologous genes to the tumor protein P53 gene in humans, we can we can do this and we get a list of genes um, that are in the chimpanzee, cow, mouse, rat, and zebrafish. Note that we currently only have gene entities for a group of model organisms. With this, we can do a lot of things. One thing we can do is we can access the reference sequences for these genes, and I'm putting them in a bio sequence so it's easier to visualize. And with this, we can do things like compute the distances between sequences or the similarities between sequences and create a dendrogram to show how genes from closely related species tend to be closer to each other. So here we can see that um, the chimp and human are uh, in, the same, in the same group, as well as the mouse and rat, um, which reflect the evolutionary relationships we know exist. Another way to see this is also uh, using the clustering tree. It gives us a similar graph. The difference here is that the lengths of the edges do not reflect the distances, but this is another way we can um, uh, visualize the state. So um, the, one of the other updates uh, that are coming is that gene properties are now tied to the latest reference genome. And unless specified, a query will return data relative to the latest assembly and used by Wolfram Alpha. So for example, here, if we want to get the reference sequence for the tumor protein p 50 c gene, we can ask for it. And we can also specify this build 38P13, which is also the latest assembly and we can see that they are the same sequence. Data relative to previously supported assemblies can still be accessed by using the genome assembly as a qualified. Note that we only support reference sequence information for the previous assemblies 37P3 and 36.3. Um, and here is how we can um, obtain it using genome assembly and specifying uh, this assembly. With this, we can do different things. Like we can see how the reference sequences have changed along with new genome assemblies. So in this case, I'm comparing the latest reference sequence with the one from 37P3 for this P53 gene. And when we align them, we see that there are two um, sections which are different from each other. One which has a... a lost this short 55 base um, sequence and this other 19 um, base sequence. 
And um, along with these updates, we can also retrieve various statistics for the assemblies we support. So if we use the entity value data set, we can get a, um, a data set with all the these properties where we can see some descriptive properties like the names and the associated species, some properties related to the completeness or quality of the assembly and um, the uh, accession numbers and a few other things. With this, uh, we can uh, do different things. One of them is uh, measuring uh, how assemblies have changed over time. So a measure of the quality of an assembly is a contact N50 value, where generally speaking, a larger N50 value indicates higher quality between assemblies of similar length. So here we get the contact N50 values by release date. And if we plot them, we can see how they have incre increased over time from around a, a value of 2 point something mil in million uh, to around 5 point something million. Uh, yeah. uh, another, um, another measure can be the percentage of sequence composed by gaps. And we can also see how it has changed over time. So uh, doing something very similar, we can see how the percentage of gaps has gone from around 7.6% to um, uh, less than 5% currently. So um, in summary, the updates to genomics data include that gene homology information is now accessible in, or will be accessible in the Wolfram language using the entity framework. Also gene properties are now tied to the latest reference genome and data relative to previously supported assemblies are still available and genome assembly statistics such as release date and percentage of gaps are provided.